In this special episode of The Model Guy, we're going to be talking about how to create masks using the Silhouette Studio software and the Silhouette Portrait cutting machine. If you're wondering why you might be using masks instead of decals, the reason is pretty straightforward. If you're painting your roundels on, you don't have to worry about trying to get them to sink into panel lines, worry about silvering, and all that fun stuff. You just have to worry about creating the masks. The best way to do this is create a set for yourself just to have on hand that you can just pop into a silhouette and cut as you need it. Now, maybe you've just purchased silhouette and you don't actually know where to start. Let me walk you through the starts. The first thing you're going to want to do is download yourself some of the roundels you'll want to use. One of the most popular ones that people search for is the United States Army Air Force roundel from World War II. So, once you've found yourself a ping or a JPEG to trace, you can open them in the Silhouette Studio by going File, Open, and selecting what you've downloaded. Please ignore all the core share references you may see here. Here we go. So, it's now opened that roundel and it's huge. That's okay, that's going to make it easier to work with. Now there's two ways that you can design this and trace it. The first is using the drawing tools, creating your circles, and then using your lines to trace the star, all that fun stuff. It can be very time consuming, but if you're someone that's a bit of a perfectionist and you want to avoid any of the soft outlines on the roundel you're about to trace, that's the way to do it. But if you're someone that's just looking to do this quick and dirty, the trace panel over here on the right is going to be your best friend. So to change this from an image to something that the silhouette understands and can cut, we need to create some cutting lines. And those are the fun red lines that will show up on the software here. So let's go to the trace panel, click it, and select the trace area. What this is going to do is highlight whatever you want to cut or turn into a template. So once I've dragged this over and covered everything, I'm going to let go. And at first it's going to think that this is a solid image, which is fine depending on what you want to do, like letters, things like that. But I want the line separate inside here. So I'm going to go to the outline. And now it's going to find the edges where all the color transitions happen. And because I'm using Bandicam and Filvius at the same time, it's going to take a moment to do that. There we go. Now, after you have your image, you just hit Trace. And voila, you have your template. Now, one of the things you'll need to do is resize this. And that's pretty straightforward. If you click on the image, you can just lock the ratio and then change it to whatever size you need. I just will usually use a micrometer and measure the decal on the sheet and then adjust the size as needed. So let's say I need two centimeters, I can just put in two centimeters. Hit enter and there we go. Now in order to actually cut this, let's make it a little bit bigger to work with here actually. Let's make it four centimeters. Four. So what I want to do is instead of peeling all the backing out and having trouble, I'm just going to frame it with this rectangle and create a sort of locked area that I can peel the backing out of. And if you're a perfectionist, you can go to the arrow key, highlight all of this, and click the center button. And that will line everything up for you which is great if you're doing an RAF logo and building that from scratch because you can just build a bunch of circles like this. Hold shift, shift, and shift. And then again, highlight all of them. And if you know your sizes, you can just measure and punch those in. And again, click center. Boom, a rough RAF logo. Now, Let's turn this into something we can cut. Let's say I'm doing two projects at once, so I'm going to cut all my duckles at once just to save myself some time. Once I'm happy with everything, I'm going to go over to the Send tab. 
and over here on the left we're going to see that my template's there ready to cut. But the machine doesn't know what it's going to cut yet, so I'm going to highlight all of that until it gets selected. Now, there's three settings here. No cut, self-explanatory, it's not going to cut anything. Cut, and the cut edge. What the difference here is, if I click cut, it's going to cut right on that red line. If I click cut edge, it's just going to cut to the outside of that red line and keep it intact. I use the cut one for my logos and all the roundels. Now for material, this might be the question you guys want answered. I have added my own tab and I'm calling it vinyl mat. And this is what you'll want to see because this is what you're going to change your settings for. I use Aura Mask 810, which is the gray stuff. It's very durable, it's not super sticky, and it doesn't ruin the paint. And my settings are as such. So take out your notepad and you're going to want to write this down. Blade depth to 1. Force is 6. That's how deep and how hard it's going to cut. Sorry, how hard that's going to cut. Speed is how fast it goes and how many passes you want to do. Since I'm only doing masking material vinyl, I only set one pass. And I like it to go nice and slow to avoid tearing, so I set a speed of 1. The segment overcut, how that I can explain that best, is instead of coming to a corner, stopping and going south, what will happen is the machine will overcut slightly and then come over here and cut straight down. And what happens is it gives you a T-shape and it just ensures that you get a nice 90 degree cut, which is fantastic. Once I have everything here saved, you simply go to the cut action. All right, here's the mask I was talking about. It's Aura Mask 810, and it's very, well, how's the word I wanna use here? It's probably one of the better ones for models. If not the best, you'll find most guys use this stuff. The 813, sorry about bumping the camera. The 813 stuff is too, thick in my opinion and it's very sticky and you'll notice this isn't my model bench I've actually gone over to my wife's table she uses for laying out her patterns so I can have the room to do this pretty straightforward to load this all up make sure it's nice and smooth get all the dog hair off there and we're gonna load it into this To do that, there's the guideline in the corner. Make sure it's going to go in facing the right way. And I like to slightly press it against the wheel so I know it's square, and then click the load button. And there it goes, sucking it in. Now, the next thing I'm going to do, there's a button down here in the corner. And that's going to bring up this arrows, which is going to let me aim the cutting blade. And the reason for that is right now, the cutting blade has no idea where it's at. It's at zero. So we need to tell it where zero actually is to start our cutting. Otherwise, it'll start cutting the pattern off the masking paper and you're gonna waste your time. So by using up and down, left, right, I'm gonna slowly feed that in, move the cutter so it knows that its starting point is gonna be up here in the corner. And that is how you're gonna save yourself some mask. Once everything's set, I'm going to hit the back button and it tells me it's ready. So now I'm gonna go back to the computer, hit send and the magic will start. Okay, there we go, exit out. So now once everything's ready to go, you'll simply click send and you are going to start cutting. And away we go. One question I get asked is, 
Do I paint my markings on before my camouflage or do I paint them on afterwards? I don't think there's really a right or wrong way to do that. I prefer to paint the markings on first before my camouflage and the reasoning for that is if I'm going to make any mistakes it's going to be when I'm painting the markings and rather than have to go in and fix camouflage, strip it, repaint all that stuff, it's a lot easier that if you've screwed up your markings you just fire a coat of black primer over it and you start again. It's that easy. Now that you have your awesome masks cut and you're ready to use them, there's one little trick that I like to do and it's to actually rub the vinyl on my forearm once or twice just to try to remove a little bit more of the stickiness of the vinyl. Now the 810 stuff is not very sticky to start with, but I have had it lift a little bit in the past. So just as a fail safe, I put it on my forearm, lift it, put it on there again, lift it. And what's going to happen is that little bit of oil on your skin is going to make it a little less tacky. So that reduces the chance of lifting quite a bit. Once I've done that, I lay it in the area I want to put the marking. Anything like ailerons or little bumps on the fuselage, what I'll do is I'll just cut little slits next to it so it'll sit flush and it's just an area that I'll have to come upwards and do a little bit of brush painting to touch up. Now that the masking is blocking the insignia blue underneath, I come in and paint the white star and bars on top, which is how it was done in World War II for the most part. And to make things interesting, I'm going to put in some layering. So rather than just use insignia white and insignia blue, I'm going to add some grays, some light gray, and some white underneath just to make it a little more interesting. And then if I want to afterwards, I can clean it up with some blend layers or make it even more gross with some oils. Once I'm happy with the markings, it's time to put the white parts for the star and bars in place and seal it up with some Mr. Masking Fluid. That way nothing seeps underneath. And then I just put my paint on top. One thing to watch out for though is to make sure you're shooting straight at the masking vinyl and try not to come in at an angle because there is a possibility it may get underneath the vinyl. So make sure you're 90 degrees to it or shooting away from it. And once you're done with all your colors, this is the most exciting part when you get to peel the mask away and see how everything looks. That's going to be a wrap for this episode of The Model Guy. I hope you've enjoyed it, and I'd like to shout out to my patrons who continue to support me beyond the channel. Your support is greatly appreciated, and as a further thank you, all patrons are going to have access to all of the silhouette templates I create. They're going to be on Patreon, and just for the dollar a day, you can get on there and have access to them yourself, along with any resin stuff I design as well. This is The Model Guy, and I will see you next time.